the U.S. spends more per capita on health care than any other economically developed nation, and yet by most metrics we get less for it. Not only are we spending more, but our rate of growth on that spending has exceeded that of every other economically developed nation. While the U.S. spends more than other countries, Massachusetts spends more than any other U.S. state. So we knew we had to do something to address um, this issue of healthcare spending and spending growth, but we also knew we had to do that in the context of getting more for what we buy, improving quality and outcomes. And the alternative quality contract is the means by which we sought to do that. And what I'd like to describe for you is the five ways that it's different from our traditional contracts. So the first of those is that uh, the provider organization that comes into an AQC contract agrees to be accountable for the entire continuum of care that their patient population requires. Anything from prenatal care to end-of-life care and everything in between is their responsibility. It can be any organizational structure that you like as long as you have primary care at the center because that's required in order to build who the population is and what the budget is. The important thing to emphasize uh, for your context is that much like your general practices, well over half of the primary care practices that are part of the AQC, they are small or solo practices. They are doctors in buildings where they have, you know, a couple of colleagues if they have any at all. Um, but they are tied together by uh, a leadership structure. Second key difference is this is a long contract. Five years was deemed necessary in order to give these organizations the time to do the 180 degree turn that's necessary to go from a set of incentives that uh, in the old system were oriented around rewarding um, each individual service, therefore not rewarding integration. Now the rewards are quite different and we knew that would take some time and we didn't want those organizations or Blue Cross to be facing a clock that has a next contract negotiation just a few months down the road. So five years. Third distinction uh, is that the payment model moves from the traditional payment oriented around paying for each individual service one at a time to a global budget. And that global budget is set based on that physician organization's patient population and their historical rate of spending. We're saying in year one, you have every bit of dollars to work with that you had when you had the fee-for-service system that didn't incentivize uh, paying attention to resource use. You now have an incentive to decide that those services could be handled differently or not done at all. Organizations that do find savings within their budget share in those savings. The fourth distinction of the model is uh, the way that inflation is handled. Inflation under the AQC is negotiated up front for the whole five-year period to uh, come down over the five years. Uh, and then the fifth and final feature of the AQC that's distinct from our traditional contracts is a very robust um, opportunity for earnings on quality measures, a pay-for-performance component where uh, there are a total of 64 measures addressing the quality of ambulatory and hospital care. As far as we know, we're the first organization in America to hold our provider network accountable for performance on outcomes. We imagined that when we raised this issue that those who were contemplating the AQC would say, that's where we have to draw the line. We can't be responsible for what happens when the patient leaves our practice. Those things are out of our control. And they didn't say we can't take responsibility. They said these are the most important measures in the contract and we'd like them to count more. That for each and every measure, we offer a range of performance targets. These organizations now are paid both for quality and for quality improvement. Because for each element, each little increment of improvement, there are additional dollars. It used to be in our original two years, uh, 2009 cohort and our 2010 cohort, that the quality dollars were earned on the one hand, and the budget and budget savings or deficit was uh, handled separately. They're now linked. And they're linked in a way that uh, says that your quality performance drives how much of your budget share uh, you owe or you keep. So what that accomplishes is it says regardless of how you're doing on your budget, if you're going to be in surplus or deficit, you have the incentive to drive as high as you possibly can on quality. What we've seen on the quality side has been uh, nothing short of spectacular rates of improvement, well exceeding anything these groups had accomplished before, well exceeding anything that I, um, having spent two decades in quality measurement and improvement, 
have seen uh, before. The AQC groups overall in their first year bent the trend by about 2%. That is, their spending growth was about two percentage points lower than the non-AQC groups. How they accomplished that in year one was uh, largely by addressing issues having to do with price more than use. In year two, what we've seen them do, though, is start to really make some uh, profound inroads into changes in use. That's the hard part. That's where you have to change the hearts and minds of those who provide care in the front lines every day. And they're doing that very challenging work and also doing the work of integrating care. We are uh, every day, every week, every month, providing data, information, and support to these organizations to help them manage toward these incentives. Um, it's a form of partnership unlike anything we've had or offered in the past. Um, and it's making a big difference, uh, not only in their success, but also in the relationship between us and these organizations. They handle it in different ways in terms of how they structure incentives for the primary care practices, for specialists and for hospitals, how much they share uh, the incentive dollars that we pass to them. These organizations now um, have the confidence, based on what they've been doing with Blue Cross, to uh, want to take on this model of payment in a larger way.